to Economy Middle East. I'm Al Sarpa reporting from the beautiful Spanish city of Cadiz in the south of Spain, of course. We're here with Sail GP, which is actually coming to Dubai between 12th and 13th of November next month. However, now we're in Cadiz and you can see in the distance the F-50 catamarans that will be racing for the next two days. Today's Friday, it's practice. Tomorrow and Sunday are the main races. Now, let me tell you, there are 11 locations, 11 very exotic locations around the world, including Bermuda and the United States and um, Saint-Tropez, beautiful Cadiz, and of course, in this year's calendar, Dubai. Now, there are also eight teams, international teams racing in this beautiful sport that is becoming more and more popular. They are in season three. Now, we've been invited exclusively here by the organizers to have a look at the race ahead of Dubai's race in November. I'm Al Sarper, reporting for Economy Middle East. So Russell Coots, thank you so much for uh, taking the time. Now I want to get right into it. Can you tell us about the story of Sail GP, how it came about? Well, you know, really, when you, when you look at Sail GP, it's the most exciting race on water now and uh, we started it because there wasn't really a professional annual championship that that existed in sailing that was televised as a live sports property and um, marketed you know in, in, in a professional way and so we saw an opportunity there and really when people look at sail gp they usually really surprised because they think of sailing and they think of white triangles on a blue background but this is about as far away from that as, as you could be. And in many ways, it's attracting, and we're seeing it with our engagement surveys, it's attracting just as much the racing fan as it is the avid sailing fan and the general sports fan as well. So, so we're growing fast and it's really exciting. Wonderful. And then can you tell us about the team structure? So how does it work on a, on a boat? And you can even add, what is the boat? What is an F-50 well, sailing yacht? So each of the teams race with exactly the same equipment. That's the, that's the first thing. And so that makes the racing very competitive. You know, one team hasn't got a technology advantage over the others. Having said that, we are constantly improving the boats. So the boats are going faster and faster, but that technology is applied equally across all teams. They all get it at the same time. They all get access to it at the, at the same level. So, so that's really interesting. Now, to describe these boats, first of all, they're probably, when people look at them, they don't really look like a conventional sailboat. It's, they, they fly above the water on hydrofoils, and when you look inside the boat, even the electronics, they're probably more like an aircraft than a, than a conventional sailboat. You have uh, 800 sensors on the boat, 3,000, that produces 3,000 uh, uh, data outputs a second, on, on each F-50, so I, I believe it's more than a billion data points in, in, in a day of sailing. So, so that that alone tells you that this this is this is a, a pretty high tech product. And in actual fact, we had some Formula One drivers recently come and come and sail on the boats, and they they were really blown away with the with the technology and the interaction of the team because you have six six athletes on board. And for example, when the boats do a manoeuvre, they have to do 32 actions precisely within, within um, very little error in terms of time. So if they're, for example, half a second out with their timing, the boat will dramatically uh, lose its orientation. And you'll see it roll one way or the other or dip nose down or nose up. Um, and that's a mistake when, when that happens. So it's, we make the boats intentionally very difficult to sail because these are the best professional um, races in the world. And it's a challenge for them and, and that's how it should be. I see. And has uh, sharing of data made it even more challenging for each team, effectively getting rid of that uh, privacy, the, 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 uh, you know, the, the competitive advantage they would have had if they weren't sharing the data? Yeah, well, 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 that was the other other thing. When when Max Verstappen came on board, he he was saying, "And you guys share the data? How does that work?" Because of course they they're so secretive, you know. But that's all driven because everyone has the same equipment. So so what that means is we can the teams the teams use that to improve. So 
if somebody's got a performance advantage, if they're doing something better than the other teams, of course the other teams scrutinise that data. But it's also really good for our broadcast insights because we can really go in, we, get, we have access to all of the data and we can explain why one team's maybe outperforming another. And that's, that's pretty fascinating actually. Wonderful. And let's come to Dubai. Uh, you're, you're coming there 12th, 13th of November. How did that race come about and, and what are you expecting? Well, we're, we're a global sports league, so we like to we like to bring our property to all parts of the world. And of course, uh, the Middle East is is, is uh, has, has always been one of our targets. And and I know I've been to Dubai. I've raced in Dubai actually years ago. I know that the sailing conditions are very very good there. So I think we we'll have a very good race. We're racing inside the commercial port. It's 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 a very confined racetrack. But I think it'll be a very exciting racetrack because the boats, because it's a deep water port, the boats will be able to come very close to the fans. And it's one thing when you see these boats on video. It's a whole nother thing when you see it live and you hear the noise that these boats make. The foils, they sound kind of like a jet engine when they go past. And I know people watching this will say, no, that can't be true. But when you see it, you know, you, you realize what, what, what these boats really are. We can definitely testify to that. We were out on the water yesterday. And it's, oh, you get, it's yeah. magnificent. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I hear there is a second location in the Middle East. Are you able to tell us where that might be next year? No, not not not, yet. not yet. No, no. We we, we, we are we are definitely uh, looking at um, uh, multiple locations all over the world. Actually, uh, when we started in season one, we started with five venues. Season two was eight. Season three is eleven. Season four, we've announced fourteen, maybe fifteen venues. And, and so we really want to grow it to where you know, perhaps some of the motor racing properties are with a, they, they basically have one event every two weeks. That's where we eventually want to get to. Wonderful. And then um, kind, of, kind of off the back of that, where do you see this sport in, a, in the, or this franchise, let's say, end up in the next five, ten years? What's your vision of it? Well, you know, we're growing really rapidly on all fronts. Our, our broadcast audience is growing, our, our um, the partnerships are, uh, are growing, our venues are growing. We're getting a lot of interest in new teams. It's for sure we'll have new te new teams um, in, the, in the league going forward. So our, our goal is to eventually increase the number of events to 20 plus events a year and probably have 16 teams of which um, we'll, have, we'll have to separate the league into, into two, but have some common events. You know, for example, a grand final where the best of the best race each other, much like they do with um, some of the leagues in, you know, for example, football, where at, 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 even though they might be playing in, in separate leagues, at one point the top teams from each league come together and compete. And I think that's really interesting for the fans. And you're a legend of the of the sport, you know. You you, you have loads under your belt. Uh, do you ever tell the guys and girls, you know, you give them advice, you tell them how to do it <laughs> the way you would have done? They wouldn't listen to me these days, anyway. <laughs> I've got too much grey here. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful, really. Thank you very much for yeah. taking the time. Yeah, really appreciate it. Well, we, we're really looking forward to being in Dubai. I, I think it's it's exciting to go to a new territory and to bring Sal GP to a, to a new audience. I think there'll be a lot of excitement there. I think there'll be a lot of surprise because people seeing this for the first time, it's like the experience you guys had yesterday. And that was in light winds, you know, wait till you see it in stronger winds, then it's a whole nother league again. So yeah, we're really excited. It's, it's gonna be fun. That's helpful, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.